I'm Aria and welcome to day 14 of Mini Winterfest. We're in the last week, we're almost there. <laughs> I can't believe that I've actually managed to do this. I'd never thought I would be able to upload, you know, build, record, edit, upload a video every weekday. It's just mad to me. <laughs> but still, I'm pretty proud that I've managed to do it. Anyway, today we are building a medieval home i haven't done a fantasy inspired build in a little while now and i really do miss it because this is kind of where i feel i am the most confident and probably the most popular of builds on my channel and i really like this one i took the inspiration from a build that i did um, a couple of months ago where I built um, the kingdom from Tangled. This is one of the little houses very similar to one of the little houses that I built for the village. So I thought it was, you know, I really liked it when I built it so I wanted to build it again but kind of on its own. <laughs> so <laughs> this is what this one is. It's a two bedroom off the grid um, like medieval fantasy inspired little forest cottage <laughs> the original one was um, just like a one bedroom one so I changed the floor plan changed the tiles a little bit just so that I could fit in another bedroom upstairs the living room area is um, quite a bit bigger so I was able to actually get like the kitchen downstairs which I was pleased with because originally the kitchen was upstairs in that little like nine tile box so if your sims wanted to bring food downstairs they'd have to bring it down a ladder and it was just not good <laughs> so I moved the kitchen downstairs so there is actually a second bedroom up there which I'm glad I managed to fit in because once you see this kitchen once I put these um like counters and everything in it's a very tiny <laughs> and it was you know when I built it for the the um the village originally it was more for the video itself it wasn't really meant to be played in it wasn't meant for sims to actually use even though it was functional so this one I have made it look a lot better i've expanded it so that it is playable it is functional so you should be able to use every room i've made the bathroom bigger because originally i had this bathtub in front of the fireplace which i think from all of my research and different um like tv and films and things that i've watched most of the time the bath was in front of the fireplace so that seemed like the most appropriate place for me to put it especially since i was building it you know very small and didn't really have the space in the bathroom to put an actual bath but as you can see i've just made that bathroom bigger i do make it bigger again a little bit later when i try and figure the roofing out um, because at the minute where i've got this it kind of didn't make sense <laughs> so i end up just moving the bathroom over so that it's i think it's four by two instead of three by two so then the roof actually makes sense with that big square that i've just built on the other side <laughs> so this one i have built in windenburg i know i said originally that i was trying to build on different lots in different worlds and try not to repeat lots through this series but that turned out to be a lot harder than i thought <laughs> and <laughs> I've ended up, I've tried, you know, I gave it a go, but it just didn't work out in the end. So I'm back to, to this one, <laughs> which is on the island in Windenburg. It's the, I think it's a 20 by 20 lot. I've built here like hundreds of times before, and it's probably one of my favorite. It's surrounded by nature. It's right by the sea and it's where I would like to live. I don't know what kind of house I'd like, but it's the lot that I'd like, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I thought it was a nice little plot for a kind of medieval fantasy home. And the good thing about fantasy builds is that you don't really have to follow any rules. You can just do whatever you like and nobody can tell you it's wrong. So that's exactly what I've done. I've kept it off the grid because I like that kind of challenge of trying to use the different items from the off the grid category that 
I don't use normally and the lighting is probably the hardest part of builds like this this um one from i think it's from jungle adventure this candle on the ceiling is my go-to one for off the grid and it's like the perfect one for this kind of medieval style anyway um i really really like the one that we got with get famous i think it's meant to be a stage prop but it's so big <laughs> that it just looks silly if you size it down because the flames from the candles don't size down with the actual like lamp so you end up with these like flames <laughs> just randomly near the floor and it just doesn't it doesn't look right so i try to avoid using those if i can even though i would prefer to use those so i tried to rearrange the kitchen a little bit here i had some issues with the windows i was trying to get them centered on the wall on the outside and it still looked right on the inside because i like the windows you know to be over the sink and it was just a real hassle <laughs> because i couldn't use the windows that i wanted because there was like a big like bar in the middle if that makes sense so i found that these ones even though they don't connect properly in the middle they still work how i wanted them to and they're cottage living windows so you can't really go wrong with those <laughs> in the original house i didn't have a dining table i don't think so i'm really glad that i managed to squeeze one in here it was more really that i had this like huge space right in the middle that i didn't really know what to do with so it was a perfect kind of area for a dining table anyway right in the middle of the room i put like a little lounge area here i had to fight with myself so hard not to put a tv in here <laughs> because it just seems so natural i think with me building houses the last couple of weeks especially that every single lounge has got a tv in it so it just was odd for me not to include one it still is odd to not include one even though you know it makes sense that in medieval you wouldn't have a tv <laughs> but you know it's still a struggle especially when you're building and the same with pcs i really have a hard time not including computers because my sims use the computer for everything and i use the computer for everything so it is really hard especially when you use mods like I do to play the game I do everything through MC command center and I need a, a computer to do that <laughs> since that's where the menu is um, but anyway we're moving up to the room upstairs this one I kind of had um, like children in mind for but you can have teens in here too um, I'm not sure toddlers probably not because they can't climb ladders <laughs> so you could probably have adults here it depends on what kind of family you're playing with but i've put quite a lot of toys up here i tried to stick with things that i thought were like time appropriate i didn't put anything um electronic like with my toddlers for example when they age up i give them a tablet and i just leave them to it and they just build skills by themselves and i don't need to worry about them <laughs> i can focus on like the kids with their homework and things like that but with um this sort of gameplay you can't really use the tablets so i try and stick with like doll houses i think they're probably the next best thing so i need to make sure i include a doll house somewhere in the house but they are so big <laughs> that i just i always size them down but I, I'm pretty sure they work. The animation's just a little bit strange because the dolls that they play with are so much bigger than the actual dollhouse. <laughs> but it looks fine. Um, so I was trying to get this little plant pot to sit on this like window shelf area. It took me so long to try and figure it out that I didn't end up putting anything else there. I literally just left it at that plant pot and then moved on to cluttering up the kitchen. The only thing that I did forget to add were the frying pans, which is silly because I always put the frying pans above the oven. That's just something that I always do in every single build and for some reason today I forgot. <laughs> but I did use quite a lot of clutter in this. I end up using 
um, all of the things from the country kitchen kit I tend to forget about them quite a lot because they're in the sculpture category instead of like the miscellaneous and clutter categories so I tend to forget that they kind of exist <laughs> and so then I have to remember to go back into the sculptures and use them from there I don't know why they're in in that category it seems really odd to put them in there but anyway <laughs> I don't tend to go into that category that often because in my mind that's where all like the more expensive kind of items and things are so I tend to go in there if I'm building like a castle or like a stately home or like an estate or a manor or something where I want the house to look expensive but those items to me are clutter items so they should be in the clutter category <laughs> so I don't know just strange to me but anyway I do put quite a lot of things in this um, corner counter I'm pretty sure they can still use it because it's all alt placed but we'll see most of my builds to be honest I don't really build them to be played in even though I do try and make them functional I kind of think like I I mean I, I do I guess get a, a decent amount of downloads on them but like that's not my whole point of building them if that makes sense I'm more interested in the actual building like of me actually building it I'm not really worried about whether people play in it or not unless like somebody has specifically asked me to build it for them to play in so yeah I don't know <laughs> so I did the flooring and the wallpaper for some reason last on this one um I already knew what the outside was going to look like because like I said this was Already, I'd already built this in another build so I knew what the outside was going to look like I don't know why I left it till last but I did <laughs> I changed it ever so slightly because I didn't include these ones with the like diagonal beams on in the original one I just had it like plain but then I thought it would just it was a little bit kind of boring <laughs> it was a bit plain so I wanted to add a little bit more detail to it so I thought the ones with the diagonal beams were a little bit more interesting I guess and I quite like the look of it now <laughs> especially with that giant window box on the um, like the front where the lounge area is I think it just looks a lot more I don't know, interesting to look at I guess when it's got the little beams diagonal beam decoration thingies <laughs> either side of it um, I added some chimneys because I really like these ones and I think that especially in fantasy builds if you have like a whole bunch of chimneys even if they don't really make sense it kind of just adds to the look of it I don't know the I don't know <laughs> I just really like adding chimneys I guess um, I wanted to use the um, the spandrels that came with seasons but they just weren't big enough so I ended up sizing up these I think they're called corbels and they because they're so much bigger you can see them a lot clearer and the spandrels are the I don't know the diagonal bits on the spandrels are so small that you can't really see them from far away and I really wish that they were a little bit bigger but you know you can just focus on the um, corbels instead so apparently I forgot to film me or record me putting the trees down but that's all I've done is just put down trees <laughs> so the last thing that I do is um, the exterior so like the landscaping and the terrain paint with this landscaping it's kind of my usual messy normal <laughs> but I wanted it to look extra messy if that makes sense so my thought process with fantasy builds or medieval time period builds whichever is that generally they probably wouldn't have anyone looking after their um like garden <laughs> they wouldn't have anyone coming in and trimming back the the bushes and the grass and things so it makes sense for it to be a little bit kind of wild and all over the place so I tried to make it a little bit more so in this one so these stones I end up moving or adjusting should I say because I put down the big 
like grass thing that we got with Cottage Living Live Edit, which I love. <laughs> it's got like little flowers on it and it's grass and it's just really cute and just adds to the extra messy overgrown look. And I don't like it when you can see that the grass is, it looks like it's growing out of the stonework, which to me is just doesn't look right. So I ar arrange them slightly or adjust them slightly so that they actually look like they're growing out of the grass and not out of the stone. Um, I add some mushrooms a little bit later. These are from Snowy Escape and I don't think I've really used them that much. I'm not really sure what kind of plant they're meant to be but I really like them so I just kind of shoved them in the front <laughs> and um, I don't know I thought they just added to that like messy kind of look. I add quite a lot of these mushrooms everywhere because they're my favourite thing to add for messy wild landscaping. And then the last thing that I do after this is um, the terrain paint. So I realised when I uploaded it to the gallery, I only did the terrain paint from the front of the house. <laughs> so if you go to download it, then you will notice that um, it's kind of missing in the back. It wasn't intentional. I just completely forgot. <laughs> anyway, we are coming to the end of today's video. So I really hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that um, you like the series and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye everyone. Just to look forward, I will see the morning dawn, I will see the